Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. Over the past eight months, my skin has completely changed. And when I say it has never looked better, like, it has never looked better. I just rolled out of bed and it's allergy season, so my nose is stuffed, but it's always a great time to do a morning skincare routine and give you guys a skin update. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Lakeisha, and on this channel I post a lot of skincare, hair, makeup, and lifestyle related videos. If that is something you're interested in, then make sure you are subscribed. And without further ado, let's get started. There's this girl on TikTok that always talks about like brightening of the skin and all the products that she's been using to get rid of dark marks. And so she got me on this Urban Skin RX Hyper Correct Intense Fading Cream. It comes with advanced even tone day and night treatment that you're supposed to use together. I've been using this for a little bit. We'll give you an update on this. I've been using this for about, I think a month now. You know, so far, you know, it's been okay. I did get this one little pimple here. So it's a lot darker than the rest of the spots on my face, but the rest of the spots look beautiful. So for this Hyper Correct Intense Fading Cream, it's a pre-cleanse. You're supposed to put it on your skin and leave it there for about 20 minutes before um, actually cleansing your face. We're gonna go ahead and do that as the first part of my morning routine. Let's rewind back to October. October, I went to see a naturopath because, you know, I figured I use quite a decent amount of things on my skin and I've always been very diligent about my skin. There's only so much that you can do on the outside and I've pretty much figured out what products I like for my acne, what products work for my skin, but that's only ever going to put a band-aid on the problem. It's not going to fix it because I'm a firm believer that your skin is a reflection of your internal state. So that means if I was continuing to produce acne on my skin something was going on internally and that needed to be fixed so I went to see a naturopath in October of 2022 and we went through kind of like my diet sorry this product doesn't have the best of smells but but y'all know I don't care what it smells like if it gives me results, you know what I mean? We went through my diet, kind of the vitamins that I was taking, just the things I was eating, and she's like, yeah, you're very, very healthy, which I know. And going through my diet, like she just couldn't find anything. I was drinking healthy teas, I was, you know, exercising, I was sleeping, I could be sleeping a little bit more, but so she sent me to do a blood test. So I did this blood test, I don't even remember the dates, but let's say this is around October, and when I got the results back in, we sat down and we looked at my blood and, and just try to see what's going on with it. It turns out that I had a abnormally high amount of B12 in my body and looking at my diet and what I was eating, like there was nothing that I was eating that was overproducing, like giving me more B12 that I needed. Now, as a woman who menstruates, we tend to need more iron when we menstruate and I have a blood defect called thalassemia. So for those reasons, I take an iron supplement. And this is something that was recommended by my doctors, not just me going willy nilly getting this stuff, right? But it turns out that the particular type of iron that I was taking also had B12 in it. That B12 was just accumulating in my body over seven years or whatever, and it just caused an excess amount of B12 in my body that I did need. She said that, you know, newer research has found that high amounts of B12 in your body can be correlated to acne, persistent cystic acne in the way that I was experiencing it. So what we decided to do was stop all of the vitamins that I was taking, no more B12, and see everything go back to normal and really see if that was the cause of my problem. So now I, I still do take iron, but she recommended an iron for me that did not have B12 in it because obviously I still needed to live, but one that did not have B12 in it. And she recommended a vitamin D for me as well as a multivitamin. Um, and so just to, to level out, you know, what I was taking and everything like that. So now I only take a multivitamin. I don't even take it every day, to be honest. I take it like once a week. <laughs> Just because I eat so healthily that I don't really need to take it all the time. And I take my iron pills when I'm menstruating or when I actually feel like tired or cold or whatnot. I take things not proactively, I take things when I feel things now. And vitamin D, of course, I take every single day. So after that, we decided to create a new meal plan for me that took into account my natural menstrual cycle. I'm sure you've heard the term before. It's called cycle syncing or eating according to your menstrual cycle. So there's four phases in the cycle, which correspond to the four uh, seasons 
phases in the year. So your follicular phase is spring, your ovulatory phase is summer, your luteal phase is fall, and then of course your menstrual cycle is winter. And just like how we eat according to the seasons, you know, you eat pumpkins in the winter or fall or whatever, you don't necessarily need them in summer. It's the same way that you should be eating for your cycle. I also started to implement seed cycling into my routine. So like chia seeds, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, walnut seeds, and just kind of cycle them out throughout my menstrual cycle as a whole. And just balancing out what I was eating just really made everything so much easier for me because you're now working with the way that your hormones actually function. So if your hormones, your estrogen rises and your your ovulatory phase and of course you need to be eating foods that combat that so you're not getting an excess of estrogen which causes an excess of acne on your skin right i'm an organizer i love to plan so i created a digital planner that helps me keep track of my exercise and my food it helps me plan my meals it helps me look at what's in my cabinet plan my exercise routines to achieve my goals and i will link it down below in case you guys want to get your hands on it as well i actually also have a period um cycling journal that i follow as well to keep track of my phases and my cycles and the fluctuations in my body and this just helps me keep on top of what's going on so I can always make sure that whatever I'm putting in my body whatever I'm doing is according to what my body actually needs at that particular time it's all about learning your body and I, I just got really focused on that um, I don't eat as much chicken and beef as I used to before chicken as we know um, at least the way that it is right now is packed with a lot of extra estrogen and a lot of extra hormones that are creating an imbalance in our body as well. So I don't eat as much chicken, I don't eat as much beef, and that includes eggs as well. I don't eat too much. And actually, if you're following your your menstrual cycle, you should really only be eating chicken and um, eggs in your follicular cycle, This your follicular phase. This is when your body can really, you know, handle it and whatnot. Other than that, I eat beans and more fish than I used to before. The other thing I do is I drink more lattes. So I love lattes, but I'm, I'm not spending, you know, $10 for latte at Starbucks, right? The ones that I was drinking at the time were from Amazon. They have a turmeric latte, which is like the, it's called golden milk or something like that. There's ashwagandha and cocoa powder and then there's a matcha one and I'll have one of those every night. Now that I'm almost done those I wanted to try something different. Now I'm going on to Bloom. If you guys ever heard of them before they also sell a bunch of like latte mixes so they have this like really nice lavender one that's good for calming in the evening and they have like the turmeric and the cocoa as well. I've been using the Bloom ones for about three weeks now so I just I just incorporate more lattes into my routine that I incorporate different medicinal like herbs and stuff that will give me benefits. Okay Okay, the next thing I do is tea cycling. So of course I am a lover of herbs. I honestly drink tea like a crazy person. Like I have a whole cabinet filled with all of my loose leaf teas and I mix them and I drink them according to, you know, what these medicinal herbs do for your body. And honestly, I found that that has helped me so much, especially with like cramps, with acne, with like pain, with wanting to um, sleep better. Teas honestly give such an amazing impact on the body and just drinking lots of warm fluids will totally help throughout the day. What I love about teas is like, this is not just me talking, you know, about my experience with tea. It's not just anecdotal evidence. This is something that has been a historical practice in like Chinese cultures and various Asian cultures and Indian cultures and, and indigenous cultures and they're practices that have been practiced for thousands, hundreds of thousands of years and they're proven to work rather than taking pills and taking antibiotics and taking all these other things. We can heal ourselves with herbs and I think that's absolutely fascinating. Definitely talk to a naturopath or some sort of doctor around you or someone who practices those medicinal um, traditions before embarking on this journey yourself but there's so much information that you can learn. I purchased a a number of books that I've been researching and creating these blends um, that are very, very helpful for hormonal balance and for energy and, and sleep and all these other things. So usually my tea cycling consists of dandelion root. This is really good as a diuretic. It will help you kind of pee out everything that needs to come out of the body. Spearmint, which is amazing at balancing your hormones. This is great for combating acne on your skin. Ginger, which is amazing for uh, before you're starting your period. If you drink ginger, it will help you um, prevent any types of 
cramping in your body. Uh, raspberry leaf tea is an amazing one for when you're on your period. It will just help clean out your uterine lining and you won't have cramping as well. So I kind of fluctuate between those. There's a few others, but these are the most important ones. The next thing I do is I drink a green juice instead of taking a multivitamin. So I did say that my naturopath recommended a multivitamin for me. I think that adults should be taking multivitamins just because um, where I live, at least in North America, in Canada, our food and the vitamin quality in our food is not the same as other places in the world. The amount of nutrients that it did a hundred years ago, right? And that is one of the reasons why people take supplements. But if you're taking green juices and you're drinking these vitamins, I think it's a much easier way of getting these nutrients into your body. My green juices consist of like celery and avocado and apple and all those like greens because I don't know about you, but like sometimes I just get really lazy and I don't want to eat a whole apple, so I'd rather just drink it. And beyond that, I've really tried to prioritize vegetables and fruits in my diet. So so every day I will make sure that I have two extremely healthy snacks readily available for me. One that is a fruit and nuts dense snack and a vegetable dense snack. So for my fruits, I usually have a fruit parfait, which consists of yogurt. I'll put in some beet powder or some uh, spirulina powder in there. I'll have chia seeds mixed up with my pumpkin seeds, my sunflower seeds, chopped up apple, my berries and dry berries as well. And I'll have that as a little um, fruit parfait that I'll eat every single day and then for my vegetable it's usually like a carrot so grated carrot with two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar dash of lemon there and a little bit of iodized salt and that will give me the minerals that I need and carrots is amazing for people who are menstruating okay so the last thing is movement which is super important you need to get your body moving in order for it to function properly so I really try to incorporate exercise like an actual dedicated 20 to 30 minutes of exercising three times per week. That's what I can commit to. So I've really tried to focus on doing yoga, flexibility and mobility training, also resistance training or otherwise HIIT training, um, as well as a little bit of cardio and dancing because I like to dance. So I like to incorporate that in my routine. And then every single day I will take a 15 minute walk around my neighborhood now that the weather is warmer, it's definitely something that I'm more likely to do. Um, but at work, we have rising desks and I make sure to rise that up for about 15 minutes. I'll do a little stretch at my desk. People think I'm crazy, but I don't really care. And then at my desk, like I will kind of just like march a little bit <laughs> while I'm there just to get my blood moving and just to get that the muscles going and whatnot. So that's what I like to do. The last thing for diet that I'll quickly touch on is sleep and water, which like everyone will say like this will make the greatest difference in your body. And yes, obviously, you know, sleep is important and your water intake is important. Um, with sleep as women, um, I learned that we're supposed to get at least eight to 10 hours of sleep. Just as women, we naturally need more sleep. So I've really tried to make it a thing to get at least seven and a half hours. I'm a night owl, so that's really hard, but seven and a half hours, gearing towards eight hours of sleep every single night. And I've really tried to commit to that. Whether or not I'm succeeding at that is you know, left to be uncovered, but you know, I, I try, I try. When it comes to water, like people will tell you, you need to drink eight glasses of water a day, but what they don't really emphasize is that our water doesn't really have a lot of the minerals that we need. A lot of the minerals that you will get from spring water is not in the water that we drink. If there's no minerals in the water, you're not really absorbing anything that you actually need to sustain yourself. So what I like to do actually is I'll take a pinch of Himalayan salt or iodized salt and I'll put that in my water and drink that. And I actually only drink water when I feel like I need to drink water. If I don't feel thirsty, I'm not going to down water just because I need to fill my eight glasses quota every single day. No, I'm going to be in the bathroom every second and I don't want to be in the bathroom every second. But I basically drink water and eat foods as my body requires it. And I don't overeat, I don't undereat, I just eat what my body tells me I need to, right? Intuitive drinking and intuitive eating. I guess you would call it. Okay, so that is my diet and lifestyle routine. On to the skincare. My alarm just went off for 20 minutes, so let's go ahead and wash my face. When it comes to skincare, my philosophy has always been less is more. And I truly, truly committed to that over these past eight months. I'm going in with the Ordinary Glucoside Foaming Cleanser. This is their new gentle foaming cleanser for your skin. You can use it morning and night. I love foaming cleansers for my combination skin. And because this doesn't really have any actives in it or anything like that, I can use it every single day. So cleansers is usually a very basic thing for me. For my morning routine, sometimes I don't even wash my face, but because I'm using this Hyper Fade Intense Cream, I do want to actually cleanse it off of my skin. So I use a foaming cleanser 
every single night and when I feel like it in the morning really. I also double cleanse and I only do this when I'm wearing a lot of makeup or if I've been outside and applied just a lot of layers of sunscreen. I do not double cleanse every single night. For my double cleanse, um, I kind of just use whatever I have. This is the All Clean Balm from Hemish and this is what I'm currently using right now. It's just a really simple cleansing balm. It doesn't have any real fragrance to it, which is something that I completely love. And I'll just use this to melt off all of my makeup. If I'm wearing makeup, I actually practice a triple cleanse. So I will cleanse with an oil cleanser, then I'll take micellar water and cleanse my skin, and then I will actually go in with my um, foaming cleanser. And that will just make sure that my pores are completely clean. And I really do take my time as I'm cleansing my skin to make sure that my pores are thoroughly clean. But one thing is you notice, I'm not rigorously cleansing my skin. I'm allowing the cleanser to do what it needs to do. I'm just guiding it with my fingers. Not only am I syncing my diet and my exercise routine to my menstrual cycle, but I've also synced my skincare to my menstrual cycle as well. So usually during my follicular phase, I don't really do a lot of exfoliating. I don't really need to. But around ovulatory phase, that is when I have a lot of oil production on my skin and when I tend to break out the most. So I actually use two cleansers. So this one is the La Roche-Posay 2% salicylic acid and LHA um, micro exfoliating peel. The second cleanser is the Naturium Benzoyl Peroxide Cream Cleanser 5% and both of these honestly like have just changed my life and it's because I'm using them properly like I've been using benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid for years but if you're not using them the right way then you're not going to see results. The thing about these cleansers your cleanser is only as effective as the amount of time that you're leaving it on your skin. And for cleansers like this, where most people just put it on their face and rinse it off, you're not doing anything. You need to let this sit on your skin for at least two minutes. Two minutes. I usually use these when I'm in the shower. So I will, you know, do my shampoo routine, put on my conditioner or my mask. And while my mask, my conditioner is sitting in my hair, I will put these cleansers on my face. Then I will go ahead and exfoliate and do all that kind of stuff. So those two minutes are running. And while that's running, the ingredients have enough time to sit on my skin and to actually do something. And so I generally don't use any serums as active ingredients. I just use cleansers as active ingredients. And because I'm leaving them on like a mask, the actual active ingredients are having enough time to make a difference in my skin. For my other active ingredients that I use every single day, um, these are split into two categories. The morning is for brightening and the evening is for retinol. I've kind of just kept it at that and not added anything in it. If I need hydrating ingredients, sure, I'll add that, but pretty much that's what I stick to. For the past month or so, I've been using the Urban Skin RX as my treatment, but before that, I was using the Topicals Faded. Now, I have definitely had mixed results from this. A lot of people love this product, but I just never really saw a really, really big difference on my skin. Um, I think at the beginning when I was using this, 100% I saw a lot but after time I always think that your skin gets accustomed to the products that you're using and that's why sometimes it's good to change it up so I stopped using this for a little bit but what I was using before was two products so first is the Jamiso all day vitamin brightening and balancing this is their vitamin C serum as well as the Naturium Transamique topical acid 5% and I've been using these to help me fade some of these dark marks on my face what I would even do actually after putting these on I would use this on any dark really dark spots like this one right here I put that on and that's it my favorite SPF to use at the moment is a black girl sunscreen I would just apply this on my skin I don't even need a moisturizer this is all so a cleanser these two serums and um my sunscreen in the morning and that's just pretty much it for my morning routine my cleanser has been sitting on my skin for at least five minutes let's go ahead and rinse that off so for now we're going to go ahead and apply this advanced even tone day and night treatment I'm just going to put a little bit here all over my face and i always use brightening treatments on my skin before applying any other product because i feel like it needs to really touch the skin
And to that effect, I've also made it super important to take my time when I'm doing my routine. So usually I would just put this on and go into a moisturizer. But now, no, I usually let these products sit on my skin for about a minute or so before going into the next product. If I'm using like a hydrating product, I actually have a fan because I'm extra and I kind of let it dry on my skin before going into any other product. And I truly found that waiting to layer my products has allowed each one of them to fully absorb absorb into my skin, fully penetrate my skin, and have the best types of results. Honestly, you just need to slow down your skincare routine. So now that that serum has completely absorbed into my skin, I will then go ahead and hydrate my skin. Hydration is key like oh my lord i've said for years that your skin is designed to heal itself you just have to create an environment where it can do so effectively and hydrated skin is the perfect environment for your skin to heal itself so i really do focus on hydration i put on layers and layers of hydration all the way down my neck i take a few minutes and let that actually soak in with my fan really extra but you know you gotta do what you gotta do right <laughs> when that's done i layer on a toner and i hop back and forth between a hydrating serum and a toner until my skin feels plump i don't care how many layers i gotta do i will do as many layers as i feel is necessary I'm gonna let that sit before applying my sunscreen. At nighttime, I like to add a little extra moisture into my skin and I will use some sort of gel moisturizer. The one I'm currently using is the Abib Sedum Hyaluron Cream and this is their hydrating pot. And I just alternate between whichever ones I can get my hands on to some sort of hydrating uh, moisturizer to thoroughly hydrate my skin. And that is what I will use after layering my toner. And that is because at night, I just feel like I need more hydration than in the day. At night is when I use my retinol and I use this every single day. I do not skip retinol day. I've been using it for so long at this point where it doesn't irritate my skin. So I use it every single day. The one I was using at the time is the Different Adapalene Gel 0.1%. Now to be completely transparent, I was using retinols and Adapalene before October. So I didn't really have that much of a purging when I started using it again because my skin was already used to it. But if this is your first time using Adapalene, you may have a little bit of adverse reactions. And for that, I have a video talking about like how to minimize your purging and all these other bad side effects that retinol can give you. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and click it above. I was using the Adapalene. I'm just putting on my sunscreen. I was using the Adapalene on my skin every single day and it really, really made my skin feel look and feel so smooth since doing this whole like resurgence of my routine in about november like it happened really quickly my skin was super smooth and since continuing with this routine after five months i still didn't experience any breakouts i was like i'm done like this is it now that is what i was using i have moved up in potency for my retinol because now you know my skin can tolerate it i'm using the natrium retinaldehyde cream serum 0.5 0.05% gel and that is what I use every single night on my skin. That's what I've been doing and my skin looks amazing. It looks and feels great. I've gotten so many different compliments on my skin. The texture is amazing. The, the, the fine lines are being prevented. The ones that are already on my face, I'm just trying to mitigate them. There's nothing you can really do about wrinkles other than Botox or anything like that, but I'm trying to work with what I have and preserve what I have at this moment in time. And also, so the dark spots are fading quite nicely. I obviously still have dark spots on my skin. They are going to take a while to get rid of, and I'm okay with that. I'm turning 28 this year. I'm approaching my 30s. I'm at this weird age where I'm like, you still have acne, like if you were a teenager, but you're combating aging and you're combating this, everything all at once. Hopefully you guys get something from this video that you can apply for yourself as well. Leave a comment down below and let me know what products you are using, as well as what things you're including in your lifestyle and your diet to help make sure that you're beautiful on the inside as well as out. Click over here to see some of my previous videos and as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I'll see you later, ladies and gents, in my next video. Bye!